My name is uh, Ace Parker. I'm a consulting forester uh, and have been on the shore since 1960. And uh, back at my home in Virginia, we always made apple butter and apple cider every year. And the equipment that we use then, the kettle and the cider press, uh, came from my great, great grandfather's home. This home was built in 1780. I really don't know how old the equipment is, but it's, it's pretty old. And uh, through the years, it has gone down to my grandfather and uh, to my father. And then uh, when he passed away, I acquired the equipment. And I let it sit idle for several years. And then I decided that I wanted to start up doing, making apple butter and apple cider because I remembered the great times that we had uh, over in Virginia on our farm. Every year when we made this, we'd have in excess of 100 people there. Everybody would come and it was just a great time. Today, I lit the fire under it at seven o'clock. And uh, you have to, uh, well in the kettle, the first thing we put in are about 50 copper pennies. And the copper pennies act as sort of a, a buffer or a, to keep the apple butter from sticking to the kettle. That's, that's very important. And you have to constantly stir it, keep it moving, or else it will stick to the kettle. And they have to keep a sort of an even temperature uh, to cook it. Uh, we usually like to use uh, John of Gold. But uh, this year we were unable to get those, so we got uh, Golden Delicious. And we had 12 bushels uh, this year. We peeled approximately six bushels to make apple butter and had six bushels to make the cider. First thing this morning, we put the, the pennies in and a gallon of apple cider that we had squeezed out the day before and then started to gradually feed the apples in at seven o'clock this morning. And uh, we have all of these people coming and everybody has to work, they have to stir. It uh, takes a little uh, effort to stir this stuff, especially when you, when you first start. And we have a special paddle that my father always insisted that the paddles be made of sassafras. Uh, I don't know the real reason other than Maybe he thought the sassafras added additional flavor to the apple butter, I don't know. But we keep cooking it uh, down until you can take a spatula of it and hold it up sideways and it does not go off of the spatula. That, that's the key to when it's, the apple butter is just about done. At that point in time, uh, we put oil of cloves, oil of cinnamon, and uh, in this particular case, we used uh, another sweetener other than sugar. It's called Summer's Sweet. Put a certain amount of that in. You have to be very, very careful with the oil of cloves because it is very strong. And uh, you think you're in a dentist office. <laughs> it smells so strong. So we were real careful with that. And then we just cook it a little bit longer uh, to be sure that all of that is mixed in, all of the spices and, and the sugar is mixed well in it. And uh, then all of the people all brought jars and jugs, jugs to put the apple cider in if they wanted some of it or the apple juice. And then the jars have to be ones that will seal, they like the old mason jar. And so then we start to dip in it and we have a funnel that we hold in each jar. And we had two people dipping and we dipped it out of the kettle and put it in the jars and then they immediately put the tops on them and, and they were sealed. And uh, I kept some of the apple butter, the last apple butter that uh, was made at my home in Virginia. I kept it eight years, I remember very distinctly that long. 
and uh, we were getting ready to throw it out and I said, well, I'm gonna try it just to see what it's like. And it was perfect. It had kept for eight years in the jar in the basement of our home here. So it appears anyhow, <laughs> based on that, that you can, all, all, you can keep it a long time before it uh, will go bad or anything. Now, once you open it, once you break that seal on it, uh, it's best to keep it in the refrigerator or it will get moldy or whatever. But after we've dipped all out that we can dip out, uh, Anne, my wife, has cooked biscuits, hot biscuits. And we try to time it just about the time we're finishing up the kettle and everybody gets a biscuit and then we sop what we call sop around in the kettle and get the loose uh, apple butter that's still in there. And oh, is that good on those hot biscuits. And uh, so everybody really enjoys that. It looked like a bunch of uh, pigs around the kettle sopping, <laughs> sopping the uh, apple butter out. Invariably, a penny is going to get in the jar when you're dipping it out. So when the people, we tell everyone if they get home and they start eating the apple butter and they find a penny, that means that they are going to have good luck. So the penny really means good luck. But a little side story to that, a couple of years ago we gave a jar to a lady and uh, she didn't know about the process and we told her it was homemade apple butter, et cetera. And, uh, she called us up one day and she says, I just want you to know that I found a penny in my apple butter and I just don't know whether I should eat it or not. So we had to explain to her that it was good luck and so she was satisfied. Uh, the cider press came out of uh, my great-grandfather's home uh, that was built, the home was built in 1780. Uh, I don't know exactly when they got the cider press, but it is old. And uh, it's hand cranked, uh, it, it, you know, there's no, nothing electric about it or anything. But uh, usually we'll get about uh, two, to three gallons of cider per bushel of apples. And uh, so we squeeze that out and so that everybody gets some of the apple cider. And at home, we used to squeeze out a lot. And my father had a big wooden barrel that he kept, the, uh, that he put a lot of the cider or uh, apple juice in and it would ferment. It, it would get pretty twangy. And when it reached this point, obviously it had fermented, alcohol had formed, he would take it to, uh, I don't guess anybody will say anything now, <laughs> but took it to a still. Uh, an old fellow out in the country there still had a still, and he would distill this apple cider and came out with what uh, my father referred to as Applejack. It was potent, but at home, uh, he would have that stuff down in the barn. And I can see the older gentlemen, you'd see them sort of migrate during the process of when they were cooking the apple butter and all. You'd see people going down to the barn and uh, they really had a big time after they sipped that apple jack. <laughs> the cider press, uh, the reason for the cranking of it is that it has a cylinder in it with rows of metal teeth across. And when you put the apple down in the hopper on the top of the, that's on the top of the cider press, it grinds it up real fine. It's, it's fine, almost as fine as apple sauce, but it's raw, obviously. And it's the whole apple, the skin, uh, the core, everything is, is ground up. And it, it falls down in a uh, slatted, basket that has cracks made 
like that in it. And you slide that down and it has a screw press that you turn and it pushes a, a circular thing down in that basket and it squeezes the juice out and it runs down in a little trough and out of a uh, spigot and down into a bucket. And uh, we usually put uh, some cheesecloth over the bucket to filter out some of the pulp that might get in there. So that, that's how the, the cider press works. The longer you sit, the harder it's going to get. Uh, I've kept some uh, for two years and it literally it turns to vinegar, very strong vinegar. But it's amazing at how clear it gets. It's almost as clear as water. Uh, but generally speaking, uh, to drink it depends upon how much, how hard you want it to get. Is The longer you leave it, the harder it's going to get but within two to three weeks, it begins to get uh, a little bit uh, sour taste to it. But up to that point, uh, personally, uh, I like it because it has a good, I guess that's a good word, twang to it. That's what my father always said, but uh, if you drink a glass of that every day, you'll surely be healthy. Uh, and most people will see the cider uh, after it's been sitting for a while, uh, it'll have a sediment in the bottom, which is called mother. And you should shake it up so that you're getting part of that. And that is, uh, I guess, part of the pectin or something out of the apple, out of the apple skin. But uh, that's supposed to be really good for you. Most people think it doesn't look good, so they don't drink it. But I shake it up and drink it. Well, we tried to do it pr pretty much the same way. Uh, it's, uh, people would usually like to do both things. So maybe part of the day they will uh, rotate in and out of stirring because you have to, like I said earlier, you have to stir the apple butter all day long. And it's a little song that uh, they used to sing with it is that uh, talking about the paddle. Uh, once around the outside, twice through the middle, is the way you stir the apple, apple butter kittle. And uh, so you do that, but then people sort of, you don't want to do that eight hours, so they will go over and turn the side of the press a little bit and turn uh, uh, the part that grinds the apple up, and then you got to do the press part. So they, everybody tries to take part somewhere along the line in each one of these events. And both of them usually go on simultaneously all day long. We think it's a great social event and uh, I think most of the people that came or that come every year think it is too because they want to be invited back. Uh, but it's just a getting together and talking and uh, it's, it's just, great camaraderie and friendship and everything is, is just people and uh, uh, everybody hugs everybody <laughs> because we, but it's a happy time. Uh, everybody gets together and they enjoy it and we have a lot of laughing and uh, kidding one another and uh, it's a great social event. I don't know, I have three children uh, I think, I don't want to uh, special, uh, uh, pick out any specific one, but right now I would think our youngest son uh, would be the one that is going to want to inherit this equipment. Uh, and of course, times have changed. Whether he'll want to do it or not, I don't know. If not, uh, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with it yet. But. Uh, it has come down, uh, let's see, one, two, three. I'm the fourth generation that I know of, and it may be some before that, that have gotten it. And I hope that one of them will sort of keep up the tradition, but 
it is well worth the effort.